Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Bowhunter or Die. Today we are going to release the number one best hunt for Bowhunter or Die over the last 10 years. Whoever would have thought 10 years would go by this quick, but I guess they say time flies. Now, before you dive in and watch this show, if you haven't seen first, second, or third part of this, make sure you go back and watch those because those are some really good hunts as well. Well, Todd's right. Those were some great hunts. Now, before we jump into the number one hunt on our list, we are going to check in with a few of our staff members. We're going to get some feedback from them on what it was about the hunts that they voted for that made them their favorite. So let's check in with those guys right now. Hunt number 10 is Dean's hunt from season four. And this got uh, some emotions rolling in me. He obviously dedicated that buck to his dad. And uh, my dad has uh, taught me all about hunting and fishing my whole life. And uh, so it's episodes like Dean's that uh, bring out the emotions in a person. And that's why I nominated it for the top 10. Good job, Dean. Okay, looking at the top 10 hunts of bow hunter die. This one was number nine on the list. It was one of my picks. It goes all the way back to season three. And uh, that was my first year on a video team. So this hunt really kind of inspired me just the way it turned out. Todd was hunting some bad conditions. He had the October lull. He had a serious drought, full moon. The deer don't move real good. But when he finally had that giant buck come in, everything went just perfect. The shot was perfect. He got the kill on film. He fell within five seconds and everything just kind of went like you want it to it just don't get any better than that but i just love that hunt i never forgot it all right well coming at you live number eight the man the myth the legend mr justin czar one of my personal favorite hunts of all time you know he was coming out of a four-year uh dry spell having a hard time connecting on some bucks i think he was actually rifle shopping at this point and uh you know what going into this year we had a great piece of property a property that he actually grew up hunting um, and I believe he shot his first buck there so it's kind of a special place um, lots of deer lots of opportunities out there and um, you know kind of textbook when that buck came through he stepped on that 20 yard trail away and phew, perfect shot hit him right in the heart blood on impact exactly what you want to see books off heard him crash it was an awesome recovery, awesome hunt. Will go down in history as one of my faves. Good job. So coming in at number seven uh, was Jack's turkey hunt with a regular bow. And uh, for me, I voted that number one. The reason why is when you can watch a hunt and your emotions follow the hunt, uh, it's a well done hunt. And the reason why is because it's real emotion. Uh, you can't fake that kind of emotion. The practice, the time, the energy, the expectation that Jack had for himself. And then, you know, lowest of lows to the highest of highs. We say that all the time. And that was a great example of that. And just sticking it out for that reason. Congratulations, Jack. I had you number one on my list. All right, guys, coming in at number six and my personal favorite bow hunter die hunt of all times is Tommy's double buck hunt, or what I like to call his twofer. Um, you know, to get two bucks down in one hunt is a heck of an accomplishment, something I hope to do one day. Um, and that second buck he shoots is a really nice deer. And to top it all off, Tommy's reactions are the best in my opinions. Hang in there with this coronavirus thing. We're gonna get to the other side, guys, and God bless. At number five, we went all the way back to season one, episode eight, and Justin's hunt for a buck he had called Little Mac. Back then, I knew Justin fairly well through the bowhunting.com forums, and I knew that with the passing of his dad, he was already having an emotional season. To watch him struggle through his entire vacation just to even get on a decent buck was something I could certainly relate to. And then when the last day of the hunt comes around and all seems lost, little Matt comes trotting right down the hillside, right out to the creek, but instead of giving him the chip shot that it seemed like he was going to, he spooks and runs off into the bushes, giving Justin only a small window to shoot through. And then to see Justin drill him through that small window and see little Mac fall over on film was absolutely epic. Justin's reaction said it all. It was certainly an emotional season and emotional hunt that I will never forget. Checking in at number four was Todd Graff's 192 inch Illinois giant from way back in 2008. 
you know, this hunt is special for me because not only did I get to take the phone call after Todd shot the buck, but I got to be there for the recovery. And there's just something special about being there with one of your good hunting buddies when they harvest what is the biggest deer of their lives in the buck of a lifetime. You know, this is the hunt that put us on the map. The timing could not have been any better. 2008 was the first year we started bowhunting.com. Uh, so this hunt remains to this day one of my personal favorites, but also one of the most viewed hunts in the history of bowhunting.com and bowhunter die. All right, guys, coming in at number three is a very special and very emotional hunt that Clinton Fawcett had on episode 16 of season six. I personally picked this hunt because it reminded me a lot of the hunt that I just had this fall when I harvested a very nice buck the same day that my grandma had passed. The emotions that went into that hunt and really in a similar sense how Clinton had just gone out there to kind of get his mind off of things in hopes of seeing one of these bucks, but really just to escape reality for a bit and to go out there and harvest just an absolutely beautiful triple beam non-typical stud with his buddy in the blind. You just can't beat it and it will forever be a, a hunt that I will remember for years to come and I know one that Clinton will never forget. Coming in at number two on our top 10 bucks list, uh, my personal favorite, Tommy's Buck Carl. What an incredible deer. Um, there's a couple of things about this hunt that kind of did it for me personally. First of all, Tommy had a lot of history with this deer. Um, and I mean, just an amazing specimen of a deer, an absolute monarch of a buck. You know, most people would be very fortunate to ever kill a deer, or even see a deer like this in their lifetime. Uh, the second thing for me though, and probably the thing that I liked the most, the self-restraint that Tommy showed in this episode. That buck came in at the wrong angle. Tommy was at full draw. He passed the shot. He waited for him to come into the right shooting lane, got the camera back on the deer and executed a perfect shot on him. All right, guys, with that out of the way, that finally brings us to our number one most voted hunt in the first 10 years of Bowhunter Die. So without further ado, let's take a look right now. Topping the list of our 10 best hunts from the first 10 years of Bowhunter Die is none other than Illinois native and my fellow red beard, Frankie Clark. You know, on this particular hunt, Frank is headed out to the stand with his best friend, Clinton Fawcett, and they're headed to a stand that's pretty much in the middle of a wide open field. They've got a small food plot and an active scrape right in front of them. You know, it's not long after they get into the stand before they spot a buck out across the field. And it's actually a deer that Frank and Clinton had an encounter with the year before when they tried to put a stalk on him. Now this deer is several hundred yards away across the field and it's a pretty windy day, but Frank grabs the rattling antlers and he tries to bang them together to see if he can bring this buck in. String. Did you come this way? Mm hmm. You'll kill my deer. I ain't telling you he's gonna come all the way out here. But... I rattled at him. And he's coming across this big wide open field towards us now, so. It's kind of ripping, dude. It's a deer that Clint's after. I kind of feel sorry, but hopefully he'll make it out here to us. I still can't believe that they were able to get this buck's attention from that far away, but sometimes when they're just in the right state of mind, all it takes is for them to hear the antlers, and here he comes. Let's get him, buddy. Got him through the
Got him. Yeah. Scrape at 21 yards. <laughs> Thanks so much, buddy. Rattled him in from like 600 yards, dude. Holy smokes. That's freaking awesome, man. God, we needed that. Come to the tree. We're, we're in the only trees in this whole freaking woods. Oh, Frank. I told you he heard you. Look at this. Oh. What's the matter there, Frank? Huh? Thank you, dude, so much. That was freaking awesome. Oh, dude. I watched him over there thinking, and all of a sudden, you go. I couldn't get him falling down on film with all he's behind it. Oh, you didn't get him falling down? No, I couldn't get on him. I might have been on him. I don't know, dude. I was shaking so bad after you shot him. I couldn't hardly. I, pull, I was going to pull back and behind the pine tree. I wait till I get behind that you tree. Did, you did great, dude. Hammered him. Let's get out of this tree. Well, we're going to try to get out of this tree without falling apart. Um, I want to thank my buddy. It's his deer. This is his lease that I've hunted with him for, I don't know, six or seven years. This is the deer we had an encounter with the other morning. We didn't get killed, so. Now that right there is every bow hunter's dream come true. Calling in a mature buck from that far away across a cut cornfield during the peak of the rut, having him stand broadside in a scrape at 20 yards, and to top it all off, he makes an absolute perfect shot, watches the buck crash, and he got to share it with one of his best friends. It literally doesn't get any better than that, and you could tell by the smile on Frank's face he was having a good time. As you can see, this scrape is just blowed open. Built this little food plot right here. And we left this tree just for this reason, it's great. He didn't go very far. We watched him tip over right here in the grass. We've been waiting for this all year long. Big old heavy four or five year old deer. Just a beautiful deer. Big bases, big brow tines. This is him, isn't it? I know. He ain't got splits or nothing. <laughs> This is a deer actually that we had two encounters out of this tree last year. I put a stalk on out of in this little draw. Uh, we weren't for sure if it was uh, a deer that we were hunting or the nine pointer we call him, but we're pretty sure it's just it's a nine pointer. Um, he's a five year old deer, great big old neck. Couldn't ask for a better hunt. Just come in perfect. We rattled at him. He's probably five or six hundred yards away. Had to hit the horns together really hard so he could hear him in the wind. And he came on a string. I mean, running the whole way. Come to the tree, 21 yards. Put a great shot on him. Everything looks good on film. Great cameraman, great friend. So, uh, this what memories are memories are made of, I guess. Great big Illinois whitetail. Bow hunter die. Well, there you have it, everybody. The number one best bow hunt in the first 10 years of bow hunter die. We hope you guys agreed that that was certainly an amazing hunt as a bow hunter. It doesn't get a whole lot better than that. Big buck, peak of the rut, rattle in across a field, stops in a scrape, broadside, makes a perfect shot. The deer goes down in eyesight and to top it all off, he got to share it with one of his best friends in the tree. It truly does not get any better than that. That hunt right there is really why we all bow hunt for those types of moments. So congratulations to Frank and to Clinton on an amazing hunt. We hope you guys enjoyed these segments. Thank you for watching. We've got a lot more fun ideas coming up and some enjoyable videos we're going to be bringing you over the next couple of weeks and months. But first, 
Turkey season is right around the corner. Our team is going to be out chasing birds come rain or shine or snow in this particular case. The weather's looking a little brutal for next week, but it is what it is. You can't kill them on the couch or in your basement like this. So we will be out chasing turkeys before long. Make sure you guys tune in. Next week, we are starting season 11 of bow hunter die we're going to be kicking things off with a mountain lion hunt which is a first for us so make sure you guys tune in next week right here bow hunter die baby